As an HVAC technician, you are the person that customers are relying on to fix their heating and air conditioning system when it breaks. Literally no continuity. Oh, wow. And now that I'm looking inside of it... Sometimes the system won't work for them one day, but when you get out to the house, it is working just fine. It can be frustrating, but with furnaces, just being patient and waiting for the system to fail completely is your best bet before replacing parts. Couple of open ones. And that Molex one right there. Yep. Same a couple that one right there. Fractured solder connections on the back of the Molex. So, I mean, and then even here on the... That's a 12 pin. Even here on the, uh, the, the that four pin, pin inducer here. motor and hot surface igniter. In this episode of the life of an HVAC technician, Colin is asked to repair a system that he can't seem to get to fail again after the first time for the owner. Melissa and Sasha work on getting some insulation scheduled for an upcoming project. And Keith gets a 40-year-old furnace up and running again after two components in the system fail. Colin was out here in October to the safety inspections and the heat Pretty tight attic access. Not a lot of room there. So we're back out at a house where they guys said it wasn't working. Um, we came out and cleaned the flame sensor and Everything was running just fine, and now the contractor is saying that uh, that the system's not working again. But we're out here, and it is working. So I'm not sure what we're going to be able to diagnose out here, since the system is working. But he sure gave us a hard time about it. You know, I guess shutting off one time at nine o'clock on Friday night after we were here. So but it's worked all weekend, so. I have known those boards to go out though. Yeah. I'd, I'd be interested to see that, that, the back uh, of it. I'd be interested in seeing the back of that thing. Change those out all the time. Couple open ones. And that Molex one right there. Yep. Same a couple that one right there. Fractured solder connections on the back of the Molex. So, I mean, and then even here on the. That's a 12 pin. Even here on the, uh, the that four, four pin, pin inducer here. motor and hot surface igniter. Uh, those are open. Yeah. So. Yeah. I'd almost turn it on and then wiggle those plug, wiggle that Molex plug, like turn it on and then wiggle this and then see if it, if anything trips out. It's kind of an odd call because we wouldn't normally go fixing things until it's, uh, like not working right we want to make sure the system is not working before we come out and try and diagnose things but because if it is, then this guy seems to be really on us 
for fixing this thing and it's still running. It's closed, but this thing isn't getting power right now. A little tight up here in this attic, huh? A bit. Back. Getting old. Cool, I like your uh, magnet there. Door magnet. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, it makes it nice and easy. So now Colin's going to jump it out and get the... Get it to stop working. Yeah, it doesn't stop working when I jiggle these. Yeah. But there is still fractured solder connection, so that might be an opportunity to. Yeah. I mean, at least mention that to him since he seems to want to know everything about and anything that possibly could be wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, I, I mean, that's what I usually do. I do this whenever I'm there. Yeah. Yeah. You know, a lot of times that's what it is. You can move it. Right. Here. When the solder points are so separated, it can actually cause Exactly. Stuff. I agree. Uh, which is what I did. I, I did this when I was here, and I was doing the, you know, I was driving the middle of all the soft and plain sensor and everything. So. Yeah. So when you came here and read the millivolts the first time, what was it reading? You remember? It was, yeah, it was like it was like two point seven. Okay, and that's and still not like super bad. Yeah, it's not too bad. But the uh, when I talked to the guy tech support like a long time ago, he was telling me about some of this stuff, and he said you want to see like three, three point yeah. five or so. Right. So it's a little low. I cleaned it, and then I was getting like three point three. So I figured it could have just been low yeah. sometimes. Totally. If it was really cold. Well, that's a loud lower. Loud lower, right? Yeah. The, the control board is um, showing signs of possibly having intermittent issues, um, but without getting it to fail right then on the spot, uh, it's it's hard to tell somebody that you'd recommend them putting a couple hundred, you know, $600 into their 
system without making sure that, I mean, I couldn't even get the system to fail while I was there, so. Um, but yeah, the guy was being a little difficult before we got there, but we would just say, you, you gotta keep it calm and keep it collected while you're there talking to him. Just do the job and get out of there. We gotta wait for the, gotta wait for it to do something. Tell us that it's, yeah, that it's actually the problem. It's it's almost like he wants us to replace something, yeah. but just we're not gonna do that. Throw parts at it. <laughs> we're not gonna do that. Yeah, I so. saw some on Facebook where it was like the HVAC group it said like load the parts cannon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't like. I don't do that. I don't so. do that. Yeah, uh, for sure. Yeah. All right. Well, let's go. Uh, small chance that it could have been the could have been the thermostat. Small right. chance that it could have been that doing it. Or Inducer motor, it. gas valve. So I want to see that. I want to see it do something else. Yeah. While I'm there. So this is the name of the company we're using for insulation, mm -hmm. and they have this little form that they need filled out anytime we have an insulation request. So we have our upcoming install on Wednesday mm -hmm. includes insulation. Mm -hmm. So that's one where it's both you know us out there, and then the installation happens a couple days after our install. So on that one, we've already submitted this and have already gotten that scheduled. This one is insulation only. So all we did was go provide the estimate and we're not going back there. Mm. And then the next step is to have a contract with this customer and then I'll call, we'll go and blow in the insulation. So the part that I want to Greg's help on was getting this form filled out and then we'll coordinate the scheduling and contract. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the majority of the time, the majority of the time we're going to be uh, just adding in, we're going to be blowing in uh, loose fill insulation. Mm -hmm. um, and we're either, we're either adding R19, R30, R38, R49, or R60 to what is already there. That's mm -hmm. typically the job that we're going to do the most uh, of. Mm -hmm. um, if you scroll down there a little bit, there is, yeah, there's a, uh, other services, insulation removal and vacuum. Mm -hmm. uh, if if we're doing that, the comp the technician is going to tell you we're removing. Uh, we're going to remove. He might tell you we're going to seal. Mm -hmm. That's another thing. And then, um, but the uh, the majority of the time we're just going to do blow in loose fill insulation, and I think we should just start with that okay. um, with you, and then and then when we get a more you know more technical job mm -hmm. uh, next time. Just ask, and then we'll we'll bring you up to speed on that. But the majority of the time, it's going to be that just blowing in loose fill. And can you give us a quick little uh, uh, education on what R nineteen and thirty and thirty eight point one what that means? Yeah, so um, R it's literally like the level of insulation that you're that we're blowing in. If we're blowing in R nineteen of insulation, um, then it's going to be about that much. If we're so blowing in R30, it, it does. Oh, it is. So this is 30 inches? No. No. Okay. Um, R, is like, oh, R, is, <laughs> R is like an insulation value. Um, so it literally stands for how much resist, how much it resists um, okay. penetration of the heat. Uh, and so, uh, you know, R19 is going to be about this, R30 is going to be about here, and R38 is going to be about here. R49 there and R60 is huge, you know. Um, so we are typically, like I know Colin sells a lot of insulation, he typically sells R38 level of insulation uh, added to what's already there. So we, if he writes R38, le, uh, R38 or we're blowing in R38 uh, insulation, mm -hmm. then that's the one you check. Um, he should let us know how many square feet exactly we're doing as well. And um, I just noticed something. He gave her two options here. R30. Yeah, there you go. So I'll be right back. Yep. So, yeah, we got to find out whether it's R30 or R38 okay. that he wants. No, it's her. I have to ask her uh, which she's approving. Okay. The 3120 or the 2640. Got it. Okay. Hey, it's Melissa. Um, do you have a quick second? Okay. Um, that, uh, Susan brought us the insulation only job. So she, she approved it. Um, did you, I, I can't tell though if she wants the R30 or the R38. Did you get a feel for that from her at all? 
Okay, got it. Yes, yes. Okay, perfect. Um, let me see if I had any other questions for you. Um, well, I think that was it, Colin. So we'll 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 call and get this all scheduled and everything, and um, um, I'll shoot you a quick text to remind you to add this to your time card. Thank you. Perfect. Hey guys, how you doing? I'm gonna follow Keith over uh, to a call, try to shoot a little video on a uh, uh, service call he got. <clears throat> but um, yeah, it's basically uh, you know no heat call on a on a very very old furnace. So um, you know I always try to tell uh, you know new new technicians not to start diagnosing you know from the from the truck you know like. Don't uh, don't start thinking. Oh, what's going to be wrong with this thing? You know, and then get it in your head. Oh, this is going to be. This is what's going to be wrong uh, when I get there. <clears throat> Old furnace. Oh, it's going to have you know, uh, you know, bad capacitor, or whatever. You know, bad relay or something. <clears throat> but uh, really, don't start you know diagnosing that stuff until you actually get there to the call. You know, have the conversation with the homeowner. Hey, what's been going on? You know. What's uh, what's been going on with your system? And he'll go into the call, and he'll, he'll go into the. You know, I was just turning on my, trying to turn on my heater, and uh, and all it's doing is blowing cold air, and you know, blah blah blah. So you know, I did this to my thermostat, and he'll tell you his whole story about it. And that'll give you enough information to let you know. Oh, I'm gonna start off at the furnace, you know, or uh, well, let's uh, you know, let's check the air filter, and then we'll head head over to the fil uh, to the furnace, uh, kind of thing, and. Uh, so let's see how we do on this call and we'll try not to diagnose it here in the car while I'm talking to you. We'll wait until we get to the call and then we'll figure out exactly what's going on with, with the system. Alrighty, look at that. Yep. Nice. You've seen those before. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm cold. <laughs> so is it just blowing cold air on you? Not it's on. just not turning on at all. It just ha happened yesterday? Uh... No, so this happened last Friday. Okay. Yeah, um, so we're selling the house and um, everything's all said and done. All the appraisals, all the inspections, everything was fine. And then um, like past the inspections date, the buyers wanted to send more inspections for some weird reason. They're like, well, we have nothing to hide, come on in. Yeah. They come in, this is an HVAC inspection. They come in, gotcha. they take a look. The second they're gone, it stopped working. Oh. We're like, wait, what? Oh, okay, gotcha. But oh, I think that is when weird. we were here, it was working. I don't know. Gotcha. It was just a coincidence. Oh, but yeah, we're like, it's cold. We still have to be here for like at least another month. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. we we don't want them to come in with a broken heater. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> luck luck weird. just has it as soon as you go yeah. to sell a high house, the heater breaks. Yeah, up. no, you know. And I know you guys are club members with us. So yeah, we are. Perfect. Alrighty, so there's no service charge for you guys today, okay, which is cool. great. Um, we're going to take a look, see what's going on. Okay. Um, once we figure it out, we'll come back and relay the message. And cool. Okay. Sounds good. Did you have any questions, concerns, anything like that for no. me? I have um, a baby in each room, though, so okay. beware. Okay. <laughs> okay. If one of them wakes Sounds up, good. I'll gotcha. ready. Alrighty, perfect. <laughs> Thank you. you mind if I go in and I was necessary? I'm going to sure. go grab my tool. Yeah, no worries.
spam control center that you're working on there, huh? Yep. So we got the W wire, we got 16 volts. But this W wire connects here, which that connects to this part of the gas valve. And then you test that and it drops all the way down to 8 volts. So you got 8 volts there. Yeah, 8 volts there. 16 volts over 16 here. Over at here. The, the 16 volts at R. Which comes right off mm. the transformer. Like literally right off the transformer. So, so you're thinking... I'm thinking transformer. <clears throat> Definitely. No, you just literally cut it and wire it. Yeah? Yeah. Look. These wires right here come straight off, go straight to the transformer. You can cut it there. Okay. Hook your 120 wire and edit, wire and that's your common okay. and, and, and uh, tw uh, sorry, sec secondary and primary. Is that secondary. what you're going to try? Yeah, that's what I'm going to try and see if it fires up. Okay. Um, you got, got a little a, universal transformer. Yeah, little universal one, 120, 208, or 240. Okay. Hook it right up and. So if you had go. to, uh, so we're dealing with 120 here. So how do you know Correct. which wires to use? So you got common is white, 120 is the black wire. So we're gonna use the black wire, um, and then you're just gonna cap the red and the orange, which is the 208 and 240. Oh, because there is there still a voltage? Uh, yeah, applied still, to those wires. Yeah. So if you let them hang and they touch anything, it's gonna burn everything out. <laughs> <laughs> Learn that the hard way. Okay. Your old transformer. Hi. This is when I cross my fingers. Would you say this is when you cross your fingers? <laughs> yeah. You never know. You ever come across those? Oh, like, yeah, man. Like yesterday, where we put it in and it burns right out, and you're like, no. <laughs> Here, power. See what I mean?
24? Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. I'm getting nine right off the transformer. Wow. That's wonderful. Oh. It works. So now we got something going. Just wanted to basically verify. Literally, that wire goes straight to here. I'm wondering if there's just a bad connection right here. If I cut that and wire nut it back, because that's literally this wire right here it goes straight from there. Yeah, and you just jumped and in. And I just went straight from there to there. And the gas valve works. And the gas valve kicked on, yeah. Somewhere it's somewhere it's dropping off. Yeah, it's cut somewhere. So I am going to Yeah. So I'm gonna cut that out. Wire nut that, wire nut that. Yeah, I agree. You're checking that for continuity? Checking it for continuity and there's literally no continuity. Oh wow. And now that I'm looking inside of it, look at that wire's gone. Oh, okay. Pretty darn weird. Wow, how the heck does that happen just overnight, you know? Yeah, I wonder if it's this is like some type of fuse or something. Oh no, literally, I think it just busted somewhere in there. Because it's literally like a tiny little... Oh yeah, like just a wire, little connection. Like, like a like an old school wire connector. Maybe yeah. they cut it and connected it at one point. Oh, I'm starting to feel a little bit better. Okay. <laughs> no, I wasn't going crazy. Because you were like, I know I got 24 volts here. Yeah. Now why isn't it getting to the gas valve? Just my luck, just like yesterday, go to replace a transformer, fix a low voltage short, and the inducer motor was bad as well. So that was a fun one. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, the package unit. Yeah. It's like, yeah, we'll get you up and running. Notify oh, right. the inducer motor's bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that stinks, man. I wish we could foresee all that stuff before, you know, but... Yeah. That's kind of like, well, well, we'll replace your transformer and then we'll test the system and see if anything else is wrong uh, with it. It just sucks that you're like, oh, it can't be coincidentally something else going on with a bad transformer. Right. right? It's like, uh, like usually there's just one thing wrong with the system. All right. So that little, that little part you just showed me that you took out that yeah. had a broken c connection, yeah. it was sitting right here. Yeah. So now you're going to... So now we're gonna wire it off. We verified that the gas valve runs if you go from W, jump it from W straight here, uh -huh. which this W wire literally just goes straight to the gas valve. So when it wasn't coming on, it was like, okay, well we have a couple 
little old school wire nuts and then whatever yeah that this thing i think that was neat that you that you decided to test that though yeah and i tested continuity, continuity on it and there was no continuity interesting so. so there's a break in that line somewhere so you just took the break out and wire nutted it back yeah but we're gonna wire nut everything back and fire this bad boy up hopefully yeah. <laughs> yeah. again cross our fingers right did you get it up and going? It is up and going. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Colin was out here in October, did a safety inspection, so the heat exchanger passed. So we already checked the heat exchanger? Yeah. <clears throat> All right, we're waiting for the uh, temperature to go up. And the blower just came on. Beauty. Always carry a couple pair of jumper wires. They're your best friends. When it comes to Let's see the ends of those stuff. things. Are they like little... Little alligator clips. Uh-huh. Just put it right where you want to put power and then right. worse comes to worse you put the other side to common if you think you have a say a break on the common side yeah you literally just take both of them you can jump them straight from the transformer to say gas valve mm -hmm. or you know, any other component cool Especially since it's older furnace, they're going to sell the home. <laughs> you can buy a messy that right there. 